morning everybody good morning happy saturday i tell you some days i think that i would lose i know this the old saying is you'd lose your own head if it wasn't attached but in all seriousness i think some days i would i really do i think some days i would actually lose my head if it was not attached this morning i get up and i make my morning coffee and I'm going to do my, you know, all my stuff that I normally do before I go live. And I sit down and number one, I pour too much cream in my coffee. I take my coffee with cream, but not as much cream as what I put in it this morning. So it was like, it was more, more half and half than coffee, but it didn't seem like I actually poured that much coffee in there. I mean, that much cream in there. I was like, I don't know. So I sat down and I took a couple sips and it just tasted like, ugh. Oh my goodness, it was bad, but I wasn't going to waste a cup of coffee. I took a couple more sips. I just couldn't stomach it. Could not stomach it. Went ahead, did my meditation, did other things. Hmm. Probably should have taken a nap. But I got up and I went over to make, I'm like, all right, I can't do this. I drank a, half, a quarter of my coffee, but I'm dumping it. I'm dumping it. I'm, I got to go. You know, I just bought some Costa Rican coffee. I'm going to go try that and see if it's any better. It's better. But I went and I opened up where I keep my coffee at. And I pull out the organic box of French roast that I had bought yesterday. And I look at it and I go and I get one of the little, because it's, you know, the K-cups. So I get a K-cup out. And that was when I saw that it said decaf decaf in green letters on the organic box green letters of decaf and I'm like oh, that's why it tasted like butt it was so nasty I'm like no it's not even you know what who, who buys I know some people buy decaf coffee that's what you have to drink or whatever but I really don't understand I really 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 don't like what is the point but then I went to the bathroom <laughs> I had to go I had to go pee so you know coffee led me to peeing and I went, I went to the restroom and I'm like, why does my bathroom smell like lavender? That's not the scent that's in this bathroom. I'm sitting there and I'm just like, what the heck is it? And I got some toilet paper and I was like, and my hands still smell like lavender. So, <laughs> and, and I've washed them with soap and everything. That's how much I'm like, are you kidding me? There's like some, so when I was at the grocery store the other day, I grabbed toilet paper cause I need toilet paper in the house. And I guess I wasn't paying very much attention. I bought the lavender scented toilet paper. I went, okay. I don't think I've ever bought lavender scented toilet paper. I do not put a bunch of chemicals into my system or anything like that. Like everything's normally pretty natural and everything, but the toilet paper was lavender scented. And it is so much perfume on there that even after I washed my hands with a grapefruit grapefruit hand wash I now smell like grapefruit and lavender like oh my gosh I wonder what other things smell like right so so somebody has not been present in her grocery shopping and that is the that is the topic of today it's a presence because I'm like this is just so weird I, I don't know how I bought decaffeinated coffee and lavender scented toilet paper I was like what the heck is up with I buy chlorine free turkey pee. Yeah, I see. I just wasn't paying attention. All right, so. <laughs> so why was I not paying attention? And here's what the real true topic of today is. I'm just sharing my funny tales of coffee and lavender toilet paper because that stuff happens to us all, all the time. And, you know, and we, I was just yesterday saying something about, you know, I was at the, because it was all, it's all grocery store related. I was at the store and oh I was out buying tennis shoes for my six year old yesterday and I ran into Gripic store you know and we're getting tennis shoes and I grabbed some back to school clothes because there's a couple outfits there that he really liked so I grabbed those and of course the kids talked me into a couple toys and then we bought a couple a couple toys and when I went in my thought was I need to get tennis shoes I need to see if they have a great big spaghetti pot because I was I was given a, one of those souvet um, 
cookers. And I'm like, I need a big spaghetti pot. My pot is just not, my pot's heavy duty, but it's not tall enough. It's not as tall as what I wanted. So it's like, I need to check that out. And then I need to also like go through the bath and bath and body area and grab some good hand soap for my kitchen. I like better quality, like nicer looking and cool, cool scented stuff in my kitchen. So that was the, that was the three things I went there for. I walked out with shoes and toys and school clothes, which is all fine and dandy, but I left behind a spaghetti pot and my hand soap. And of course I got home and then was like, oh man, man. So yeah, so I was not being present. And as Amy shared here, you know, it's, it was actually, I was just, I was distracted. I was highly distracted because number one, I had children with me that always distracts you. Right. But not in each one of those instances, only in the shoe shopping instance. Now, when I was off and running around and getting coffee and, and I was getting a toilet paper, a completely different story. I was all by myself. I was in a good space. I was not stressed out. I was thinking a lot. And here's what I was doing. I was in creative energy because I have so many really cool things going on right now. And there's just like, I'm like, I don't really truly believe in all the mercury retrogrades or anything, but a friend of mine who watches, who pays attention to that all, I saw that she had said something that the last seven days of mercury retro, retro, retrograde was really, really bad. And she was making funny comments about it, you know, like, oh my gosh, now I can finally wake up. I can finally, you know, like stand up and get out of bed and all that. And I haven't had that issue. I've actually been extremely energetic and creative and all this different stuff going on. But with that comes chaos. Creation breeds chaos. Creation can breed chaotic thinking. It can breed chaotic lives. It can cause things to kind of just get messy and out of control in your life. I mean, like right now, like I'm thinking I need somebody that will just come in and just, you know, like completely clean my house for me because my house is a freaking train wreck in my opinion. It's not really. Other people would say your house is not dirty. To me, it's dirty. And I have lots of little piles of stuff that I have started and I've gotten a whole bunch done or I've completed a project and I didn't finish the project, the, the cleanup of the project and it's sitting there. I just need to like throw away some of the paper and just organize and do all that. So the creative energy breeds this chaos. Okay. And, and it truly is. I always really, being a mother, I always relate back to motherhood on stuff. And I always think about like the, when you're in labor, you're not thinking about a whole lot of other stuff except for that that laboring process and the world could be falling apart around you and you're just not going to care. You're only focused on what the creation is in that moment. But while you're focused on that creation, there's a lot of mess making going on. There's just a lot of stuff happening, a lot of moving pieces that you have to deal with afterwards or somebody else takes care of or something like that, right? And that is the same thing when we get into creative energy. One of the main things that can cause us to get out of presence, to have, to be distracted in life is creative energy. It's what you do with the creative energy, right? Hold on. I'm going to see what Addison has to say. You had a few moments, but most people walk around with total lack of presence. Amy, I agree with Addison. Sometimes energetically places and the people in it distracted him empathy issues. Yeah, there can also be that when you're not very well grounded. Um, and I think that I've been actually overgrounding too, since I got back from camping last week, I've just kind of felt very solid in my body. And for those of you who don't understand what I'm talking about and what Amy has brought up in empathy issues and energetic places where we get distracted, it's, it's really that we're just picking up on the emotion to put it in very, very simple terms, empathetic issues is to pick up on the emotion of the people around you and to let it affect you at, at a, where you t take it on as your own almost. Um, and so you, it's like, I like you all of a sudden you're feeling great, but then all of a sudden you're like, I don't know. I, I feel kind of sad for some reason. And then you realize that you're your friend over here or somebody or you're sitting in a room and there's just somebody next to you that is just like totally downtrodden and negative and you're just like whoa so it's kind of that's what that's what those empathetic issues are and to be 
grounded is is really when you're just really solid in yourself and there's a lot of different techniques with a lot of different spiritual beliefs that you can do for a grounding process I tend to go camping um, just because that just seems to really get me grounded in my body and and serves multiple purposes but grounding is definitely one of them and when I'm in high creative times like I have been over the last month for sure and over the last couple weeks big time I, I definitely am like okay I gotta go hiking I gotta go you know do camping I gotta go in suntan and lay out on on the actual earth and feel that the whole process but the distracted portion and to get back to like the comment that Addison has made here as it's made about that you know a lot of people do walk around with lack of presence and that's what it comes down to now I I skipped out on coffee and on toilet paper and a spaghetti pot right and soap but here's the thing the majority of us and I'm, I'm guilty too, right? Nobody is 100% present 100% of the time. Matter of fact, nobody's 100% present any amount of the time. We all have distraction going on and it is because of the background thoughts that are consistently popping into our head and they will kind of pull at us while we are doing anything, okay? Presence though is one of the key factors to absolutely any success that you're ever going to have because without presence there's no way for you to actually gain focus to gain clarity you have to have presence to have clarity of thought clarity of feeling of what direction you want to go so you have to get a hold of presence just for little bits of time it's not that you have to be overly present you know all day long or even for the majority of the day but one thing that I have found that really, really benefits in being more present throughout the day is to take the time to go and do a 10, 15 minute meditation early in the day. And if I'm having a tough, if I am on the struggle bus of presence for the day, then I'll go and I'll put myself on another timeout meditation sometime else in the day, like later in the day, like when I'm getting into that, yeah, right, I'm reaching that afternoon and maybe I'm just feeling a little fatigued because I'm not overly present because I'm not overly, you know, conscientious of things going on. I'm not here. So my energy is just getting drained out in multiple ways and I don't know exactly where it's going. Well, I need to come back to myself. I need to come back to me. So I'm going to meditate for 10, 15 minutes and just come right back into who I am and let all that stuff just kind of go for just a second and that is something that you know a lot of people go oh well that's that new agey foo foo stuff well new agey or not no matter what your beliefs are you can call it stillness you can call it quiet time you can call it mindfulness you can call it meditation um i would not call it prayer because it's different than prayer but no matter what you're doing to have that moment and we're just sticking with meditation here of meditation is I'm sorry these I have these crows across the street and these crows are almost the size of a hawk they are humongous and they're sitting up on top of the house across from me and they're having this conversation I don't know what they're doing but they are really humongous birds over there um I'd show you but the phone would never do justice but they're like really really big really really big um not as big as the beautiful hawk that sits over here in this tree sometime though he is a little bit bigger than them so yeah so what when you get into that meditation state what you have to do is when you bring yourself there no matter what you want to call it right it is just about the release of the connection to the thinking okay so you're really you're not releasing the thoughts this is not about you know a lot of people try to do meditation and they try to go oh I'm gonna just not think anymore well thoughts are constantly coming in okay they're always coming in you're receptive to them they're going to come in and where you where meditation kicks in is do you attach to them or do you not attach to them every time we attach to a thought that is where we go down the loophole of the thought and that thought can you know turn all different directions it can take us in multiple ways it'll bring up a bunch of emotion in us all that kind of stuff it gets us to act differently because we get one thought it doesn't even have to be a real 
real thing. We can think it and then all of a sudden we're feeling something and the next thing we know we're being reactive to the emotion and now we are acting out in our life and it was because of a thought back here that we attached to that may or may not be accurate and true. This is where our thinking can really send us amok sometimes. Well, in meditation, you just make the choice to not attach to any thought. And when you do find yourself attaching, as soon as you realize, oh crap, I attached to that thought, I'm way over here when I should be over here, you just go, oh, and it's come back to your focus point. So I will tell people, you know, if you're sitting outside, focus in on one leaf on a tree or one flower and just make that your focus point. Pay attention to a drip in the background or the ticking of a fan or your your um, breathing. Bring your, pr your presence back to your breathing or back to the space between your heartbeats. Something like that where you can just come back to that space because when you come back to a focus point, you release attachment to the thoughts. And it does require practice, but I can tell you that in that you gain so much more presence throughout your whole entire day and you are not as reactive you're not as you know not as much in the world is out to get me mode or blame or jumping to jumping to conclusions on different things you can actually hit what i call the pause button hit the pause button go because you can feel when your thinking goes like that and all of a sudden you're like oh my gosh I just went down like a thousand different thoughts there about this one topic and you're not even conscious about all the thoughts that you just thought, but you'll feel them. Oh, that was negative thoughts that I was thinking because I am, this happened and now I'm feeling this way. Ugh. This did not make you feel that way. What made you feel the way that you're feeling is the thoughts that were triggered by this and all of a sudden you went down all these thoughts. And now you have this feeling in your body. But because it happens so quick, you don't even realize that you went down a rabbit hole in your thinking, thousand thoughts down, and now you're feeling like crap. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're like, oh, well, but you made me, you hurt my feelings. You know, yesterday, yesterday I had um, my six year old and my four year old, and then their little cousins over who are, are five, four, and two. And then my daughter, who was sick as can be yesterday, her she came over with her, her son, who's four months old now. So at one point, Addison was over um, supporting me on this because there was like a kinder care going on here. And so we had the, we had the baby and we had five kids under six, all boys, and they're just crazy running around and fighting and kicking and hitting and blaming and pushing and all this different stuff and you know it, children are beautiful examples of individuals who can be so stinking present in some things and can be sidetracked by a rabbit hole thought within a half a second and have no inclination right as to oh I was thinking all this stuff and now I feel this way because they have not even connected any of those pieces nor will they until their early 20s but not really truly um, but it was very interesting because you know it was like oh he he knocked me down he hurt me but a lot of the stuff especially with my six-year-old he's definitely sulky sixes at times and he is very big on you hurt my feelings you hurt my feelings and it's like okay Unless I take a baseball bat and hit you, I can physically hurt you and that can physically cause you a bad feeling, right? But can't really hurt you feeling-wise unless you allow it in your thinking, okay? Unless you allow it in your thinking. And I, I have this love-hate relationship with what I'm going to say next. <laughs> It's, it's true, but it's it's true according to what I know so far, but it's it's at the same time one of those like moments here. So hold on. The old statement, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. It's such crap, right? It's such crap. 
Watch your words. Words count. Words matter. Words hurt. Words stick around longer than actions do. A word will linger in your consciousness for a lifetime potentially, both positive and negative. You can get hurt physically and you'll heal and yes, you'll have the memory of the action, but it's more that the, when people are emotionally rough to us and hurt us, it really truly is, it, it lingers a lot longer, right? Right? Like that heartbreak that we all have had, those harsh words, that negative fight, those cruel comments, they stick and they cause all this different trauma, emotional trauma to us. And yet, and here's where I'm going to just go, Meow. it's all our fault. It's all our fault because we hold on to the words. We let go of the physical action. We go, well, my body healed. But he, she never apologized. He, she said, blah, blah, blah. He, she, you know, said that I was da, da, da. And what are we doing? Should that other person have said whatever they said? Probably not. Probably not. It probably was not in their best, highest self. But after they release the words from their lips, after they release those words, it now becomes our responsibility to either, we, we, get, the, we get the choice here. Do we own what they say? and keep it for a lifetime or a long time until we grow weary and tired of it and go, this is not serving me, it never has, and then do a whole bunch of work around it and let it go? Or do we just go, that's your opinion, but your opinion is not my truth. Your opinion is not who I am. Your opinion is not anything about me. That's just yours. Those words are yours. They have nothing to do with me. Now, none of us get that one right very often, right? Because words hurt. But psychologically speaking, when we really get into the concept of self-responsibility, when we get into the concept of there's no such thing as victims, only volunteers, we are volunteering to carry somebody's words and keep their words alive when we make the decision to consistently think about them and thus feel them and keep our feelings hurt by them. It is us hurting ourselves repeatedly, us stabbing ourselves repeatedly, not the other person. It's over. It's done with. Just like the way to forgiveness is to forgive self first for letting it to happen and then to forgive the other person and not even to, you know, you have it not for them that you ever do forgiveness work. It is always for self that we do forgiveness work because not forgiving is much like that statement says. It's kind of like, you know, swallowing poison and expecting the other person to get, to get hurt from it. It's not going to happen. We are the ones hurting ourselves by not forgiving. We're the ones hurting ourselves by not letting go of the negative words that are coming at us. And when we get caught up in all of that, what happens? Where are we at? So here we are. And I bring that up. You know, like where'd she go? Coffee, lavender, toilet paper, lack of presence, creative energy, lack of forgiveness, hurt feelings, words that are worse than sticks and stones or not. Or maybe, or who knows, each opinion is their own, right? Has it all pulled together? Quite often, we are in a creative moment. Quite often, we are in a deep, loving connection with a new person. Quite often, we are, you know, going, no, I want this for my life. I'm going to step up. I'm going to do this. I'm building this business. I'm calling in the life that I want. I'm calling in the money that I want. I'm calling in the health that I want. You're, you, whatever we might be doing, we're doing this stuff, right? What are we wanting? We're wanting happiness. We're wanting to have a beautiful life. So we're trying to call in that. We're trying to create that. And we start down a new path. And then lack of presence happens. We get sidestepped by, whoo, you know, like me in the grocery store, right? Buying lavender toilet paper, which I would never do because of the chemical content. And I'm like, holy crap. But, but, and I don't know if this is accurate as to what was going on with me or not. It doesn't much matter if the lesson is what it is. We get caught in 
whatever we're doing, we have this lack of presence moments. What causes the lack of presence? The background thoughts. The background thoughts lead us into an emotional state, lead us into tension, constriction, and restriction of what we need or want to have happening in our physical body, right? So our physical body feels stuff, and there's these thoughts going on that we have, we're not yet present, aware of, and we just pick up on the, I don't feel good. Okay, I don't feel good. Well, if you're not feeling good, it means that you're not thinking good. And if you're not thinking good, what the heck are you thinking? Because here you are in this beautiful moment, this beautiful experience. Uh, and it's kind of like I'm going to just bring this down to the bedroom because I think this happens a lot in the bedroom. You are with your new partner or you are with your your partner of however long you are making beautiful love you're kissing you're touching it feels so good you're really into the moment you're really feeling it you're really connected and ladies I am talking mainly to us here but guys do it too and you're really in this moment and then something happens and you don't know why but all of a sudden you feel yourself distancing you feel yourself just not quite there anymore and then you start to have a few wondering thoughts and you think, oh, did I lock the back door? Did, is, is the bedroom door shut? I don't want the kids walking in. Okay? You think these things, which sends off these little things. Where did those thoughts? All right, so you're concerned, right? Concerned thoughts. And then next thing you know, you feel yourself distancing a little bit more, a little bit more. And all of a sudden some negativity, like really you're like, just like, I'm just not into this anymore. I'm just not into it anymore. Where just... Five, ten minutes before, you were really, really present in the moment. You were really enjoying it, really and really taking it all in. If you were to get into the real deep thinking of what is going on there, those thoughts that you actually paid attention to, like the back door and the bedroom door and the maybe the phone or music or the ceiling fan being too cold or what or it's too hot in the room, whatever that stuff is. There's actually a whole timeline of thinking that has occurred between those thoughts that you became present of and those thoughts that you were in between the other thoughts of concern were other negative thoughts from ah, past shit. It's all past shit. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, like if you really get into it, you're going to find out that if you, if, and, I, and I encourage you, like pick a moment, maybe even the bedroom moment, but pick a moment where you notice that, that those thoughts where all of a sudden concern starts popping up, worry, stress, that kind of stuff. Now you pick up on those main thoughts. Well, in between those, what are the other thoughts that are happening? And if you ask yourself, you're probably going to come up with fear. You're probably going to come up with doubt. You're probably going to come up with, with shame, your guilt, with lack of worthiness, with, you know, like, oh, I don't know if I can trust this. If I open up at this level, will I be received okay? Will I be loved enough? Will this happen? Will that happen? And what it's going to be is the fear of it not happening, the fear of something bad happening, and that causes all the resistance, and there goes your lack of presence. There goes your lack of presence. So. My work to you for today is to do just that. Find a spot in your day, find a spot in, in, in your thinking. And when you really notice, Hey, I'm not being present. And number one, just try the whole meditation thing out. Do 10, 15 minutes, just a couple times a week. Go for just like two, three times a week and just give yourself that 30 minutes, 45 minutes over the course of the week of that. And then the other thing is, is to really become just present when you become aware of the negative thought or the negative tension in your body and you're like I just don't feel right about this then realize hey I'm actually resisting what I actually want here I'm resisting my joy I'm resisting my happiness I'm resisting all this stuff I'm holding on to the old baggage so what have I actually been thinking here oh, crap I've been thinking about blah 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 and recognize it because until you recognize it and you own that you're doing it, you can't get rid of it. Because if you are blind to what you're doing, you cannot do the release work to actually let it go. So, let me see, what is uh, Addison Hard Truth? I love what people call, call it new age. It's ancient. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah so so there you go um let me see announcements oh my gosh if you were local if you are local to DFW, there is so many announcements, I'm not even gonna go through them. I'm gonna just say, if you're local to DFW and you're catching this, just go to my um, events, my calendar, my events tab on my website at www.kendallwilliams.com and click on it because August has some beautiful workshops coming up, both local and global. September has some amazing stuff and I've got stuff, I actually have stuff booked all the way through to December because I'm going to be teaching down at the uh, the Austin Tantric Festival this year. So I'm going to be teaching and facilitating a couple workshops down there. That's going to be really, really cool to work with them. Um, but outside of that, there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff. Addison and I are actually headed off to Belize in October. So we're going to be doing some entrepreneur online global workshops from Belize, teaching lifestyle, teaching how to monetize things. We don't have a, a name title picked out yet, but it's definitely going to be about empowered women. I can tell you that because I think that we're both kind of leaning in that direction. So I'm going to just call it out. Sorry, Addison, I'm calling it out here. Uh, she's used to me. <laughs> And September, we I, there's a whole bunch of local stuff going on. And in August, when I'm down in Mexico, I'm going to be teaching um, Superwoman Success Secrets. And this is just obviously for us ladies, for us mompreneurs, and it is Superwoman Success Secrets for moms of today, uh, for mompreneurs of today. And what it really is is that, for those of you who don't know, I have seven kids. I've been an entrepreneur for the better part of my adult life, like all of my adult life, I think, pretty much. Um, and it it does require a super let me let my dog out my old girl she needed to be let out so it does require a superwoman kind of mindset uh, and at the same time an understanding of how you can get everything done so to be mom I know that the reason why I have the practice that I have and I have the setup that I have is that I share 50 50 custody with with my youngest two I have full custody of my oldest two that are in house and have had full custody of my older five kids for years since their father and I broke up but I've kind of created that that whole lifestyle where I can be full-time mom and now grandma too. Ooh, that's a whole new one. Um, but to be full-time mom and at the same time run a good coaching practice where I see clients in my office. I teach, you know, one or two workshops a month, either local or online, do different things like that. Still have space for travel, still have space for, for dating for, you know, for my guy for doing all that kind of stuff and for health and all that kind of stuff. Do I have my crazy ass moments? Oh heck yes, there's tons of crazy moments that can happen and the chaos happens just like I'm like, I, I hope that somebody like, I hope that the cleaning fairy comes in. Not that it's dirty, but I just like, I'm like, I'm just looking around like, somebody just come clean my fucking baseboards. <laughs> you know, like that. But it is one of those things of, you know, like the chaos happens, but how do you get how do you manage to keep everything afloat? And I see a lot of mompreneurs out there who will really hit their business hard for a couple of days and then kids sidestep, you know, sideswipe them and or they end up getting really sick or really fatigued and they just don't have the energy for it. Or they're like, there's no way, I don't have time for dating, I don't have time for my marriage, I don't have time for this, I don't have time for that, you know. So their health goes down, their relationships, their quality of their relationships go down, they're not having the girl time that they, that they wanna be having with close friends or their sisters or something. Uh, or they're like, how the heck do you, and I get this a lot, you know, because I put out, I put out, two pieces of new content every single day. I do a new live stream every single day and I put out what I call a musing, an article every single day. There's anywhere from a thousand to three thousand words sometimes. So I put out that and then there is course creation and workshop building and radio talks and you know and interviews and I write for a couple other places online so I get articles out to them a few times and everything and there's all this stuff plus just the follow up with my with my elite coaching clients that happens and the coaching appointments and then you add in everything else and it's like well 
you know, everybody, every people are working jobs and are working from, from nine to five, nine to six, and then they've got two hour commutes and everything. Well, I don't have that. I get done in about four hours what most people do in probably four days. And that's the truth of the matter is that there's a whole bunch of stuff, but I have certain systems in place. I've learned what my core activities need to be. I have learned how to take my ever expanding to-do list of must-haves and must-dos and all this kind of stuff. And I, and I manage to keep everything going between having a different list going, knowing what my core activities are, but keeping my creation at a, at a high level always because without the creative juices, without that, my business just won't thrive. My business won't grow. And as mompreneurs out there, what do we want? We want our business to grow, right? Because that's our livelihood. That's our lifestyle. That's how we support our babies. That's how we, we do the things that we want to do. And when we come back to what our why is, which is the freedom and the flexibility and to be able to provide a lifestyle for our children and for ourselves, well, there you go. You have to be able to, but we don't want to work ourselves to the point of exhaustion where there's none of us left to be able to be good mamas and to be able to be good friends and sisters and lovers and partners and, you know, it, the reason, at least I hope that the reason why, if you're a mompreneur or an entrepreneur, I hope that the reason why you're doing it is is for the freedom and for the vitality, the energy that it can give you. If you're just doing it just for the money, then you're going to die out pretty quick. I mean, it will exhaust you and you can do things a lot of different ways. And so, and I used to do things very, the way of just exhaustion because I did not know certain things. So what I'm going to be teaching in Superwoman Success Secrets for mompreneurs of today while I'm down in Mexico, it's, probably, it's going to be just an intensive from the beach live stream global class taught here on Facebook. And the big points that I'm going to be really be teaching is giving you guys the hacks that I've learned over the last 20 some odd years of being a mom, I guess it's 24 years now of being a mom and, and running business as well and building what how do you do it all right like how can you have space in each day and over the course of a week a month a year to get done all this kind of stuff and still have energy still have vitality still you know like and all this creative flow and not just be like oh I'm just done I'm just so done not that I don't have my done days everybody gets a done day every now and then right but it really is about how can you stay vitally active for yourself and for your business and for your children in that in this moment you know and really have success because success is so much more than just the money it really is it is about the lifestyle the freedom the happiness and that's what we're going to be talking about in superwoman success secrets so i'm going to be giving you a bunch of hacks and just different things to really get you streamlined on how you can become that boss mentality of your of your mompreneurship and really start making things happen and not sacrifice any subject of your life that is important to you okay so look for the details on that to come out very very soon and the registration because that will be happening at the end of august my birthday is on the 27th and i'm going to be teaching this class on the 25th of august so there you have it um if you don't see it come out feel free to message me if it's of interest to you feel free to say hey it's of interest uh, to me here in the in the comments section and i will put you on the pre-launch list or you can message me and ask to be on the pre-launch list for superwoman success secrets also so that will be coming out uh other than that I think I'm good. I hope you're good. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. I'm going to go off to the water park with my kids. And then I'm jumping in the car and going to Hot Springs, Arkansas for a couple days and doing some hiking and some just some good old-fashioned family relaxation time because both of my grown girls with their babies and myself, we're all headed up there with a beautiful log cabin in the woods 
and just going to chill for a couple of days. But I will be seeing you guys tomorrow for another Conscious Coffee. Still coming from Dallas. And then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I'll be coming to you from Arkansas, probably in the woods someplace. So I love you guys. As always, stop existing. Start living. Know that you are unstoppable. You are powerful. You are lovable. You are worthy of your greatness. So claim your life today. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow.